Hello, I'm Kent Myers. I'm Mick Cornette, and it's time for the verdict. As a part of its traditional and continuing commitment to public and community service, Crow and Dunleavy Law Firm presents The Verdict, an objective discussion of contemporary legal issues hosted by Kent Myers. And also brought to you by a friend of Oklahoma Lawyers for Children and Delta Dental Plan of Oklahoma. And welcome to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett, and once again, we have taken our show on the road. We're in Stillwater this week. Let me quickly introduce one of my co-hosts, or actually my only co-host, yeah. Kent Myers. <laughs> so far. <laughs> we have a couple of guests coming, but you are the only co-host, and we're going to be discussing higher education this week. We are. We're uh, lucky enough to be back on the Oklahoma State University campus. We've been invited back one more time. I, I was uh, wondering whether they'd let us come back, but they did. <laughs> Very kind. And today's a show of comparisons. Uh, we want to compare in the... In we, in, we think ways that will be in, of interest to you, one of the largest public uh, universities, Oklahoma State University, with one of our uh, smallest and yet oldest universities in Oklahoma, St. Gregory's University. It's a private school, a Catholic-sponsored school in uh, Shawnee, and we want to talk to the presidents of each of these organizations uh, to see how their problems are different. Mm -hmm. but how in many ways their problems are the same and we'll want to see what their approaches are to solving these problems. Their methods, their goals, are they similar, or are they not? Yes. It should unfold. It should be an interesting show. Dr. Lawrence DeSisson, Dr. James Halligan will be joining us and we'll be right back on The Verdict. This program is brought to you by the friendly people at Stillwater National Bank, with offices in Stillwater, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, and Chickasha. Member FDIC. In Oklahoma, there are more than 1,600 children waiting to be adopted. They're of all ages. And for many, home has been a source of pain and conflict. They've dreamed of finding a better life and a loving family. Consider adoption. For more information, call 1-877-Oakley-SWIFT or visit the website www.okdhs.org. Adopt. It may be the toughest job you'll ever love. And Blankenship has stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. They get fourth and seven on the Tiger, 46 yard line. 38 mm. seconds on the clock. The Tigers have no choice but to go. Uh. Wiggins in. Here's the snap. children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all of the quality assistance and representation that can be offered in our legal system. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children has over 350 of the best attorneys and volunteers in Oklahoma County who donate their time and services to represent children. For more information, call 405-23-CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. And welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers and an opportunity to introduce our guests. Two college presidents today. Uh, I'd like to introduce first on uh, my left, uh, Father Lawrence Stasisson, the 13th president of St. Gregory's University in Shawnee. Uh, Father Stasisson, or Father Lawrence, uh, for the rest of this show, uh, <laughs> is a graduate of St. Gregory's. Uh, he uh, received his bachelor's degree from St. Anselmon College. He received his doctor doctorate in sacred theology from the uh, Pontifical University in Rome and uh, has uh, been uh, president of St. Gregory's now for several years. Just over one year actually. Well going on to. There you go. <laughs> and, and thank you very much Father sure for coming. Thing. Thank you for having me. On my right a repeat guest and we really uh, enjoy repeat guests particularly when we're occupying their campus uh, to do the show. Uh, uh, Dr. James Halligan the president of Oklahoma State University has agreed to join us again 
He's uh, not only the president of OSU, but the CEO of OSU University Systems. He received his bachelor's, uh, master's, and PhD from Iowa State University and is the 16th president of Oklahoma State University. Dr. Halligan, thank you very much for uh, joining us again. Thanks for inviting me back. Well, we're pleased to have you. Uh, Father Lawrence, tell us about uh, St. Gregory's University in Shawnee. There are probably a substantial number of our viewers that aren't very familiar with your university, but it is a four-year university. It is a four-year university, and it's very much an Oklahoma institution. It's Oklahoma's oldest institution of higher learning. We like to, to, to claim that fact, but it's also one of the, the newest four-year programs in the state. What year did it begin? And we began, we were founded in 1875 at the mm. southern end of the Potawatomi Nation at the invitation of the Potawatomi Nation Citizen Band, and uh, we have been in Potawatomi County since that time. We've been in Shawnee since a little after the turn of the last century, around 1910. Now, you're a Catholic supported university. Yes, we are owned and uh, sponsored by and we believe inspired by the Benedictine monastic community at St. Gregory's Abbey which is located on the campus at St. Gregory's. We are a Catholic university in inspiration and in, in that way we are also uh, inspired by the ideals and the, the high quality of tradition that is associated with Catholic education throughout the centuries. Let me ask you a personal question if I may. Sure. You are uh, both a priest and a monk. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. What is the difference? <laughs> okay. Well, not all priests are monks and not all monks are priests. Uh, a, a monk is a member of a monastic community. Benedictine monasticism has been around since the first part of the 6th century. It started in the fifth, uh, 6th century Italy under St. Benedict's rule and that tradition has held strong throughout the centuries in almost every culture of the world. We, of course, founded in Indian Territory in 1875. And Benedictine monasteries are communities of, of men or women who come together to seek God and to serve humanity. Now we have monasteries endeavors. here in, in, at St. Gregory's and other places. Yes, there are actually five Benedictine monasteries in Oklahoma, two uh, monasteries of men and three of women. Uh, one in eastern Oklahoma of men, east of Tahlequah, women's monasteries in Tulsa Sand Springs and in Piedmont, Oklahoma, and then of course St. Gregory's there in Shawnee. The uh, student body at St. Gregory's is approximately what size and what kind of growth have you seen or, this, or uh, decline in it? This moment? fall we'll have a total head count of right at 800 students, uh, full-time uh, enrollment at around 670. If we look back six years ago, we have to compare an enrollment that was around 250 students. So we've had phenomenal growth over the last five years. That it's been a very exciting um, opportunity to be part of that growth. So the oldest institution of higher learning is one of the newest four-year universities. Yes, we when implemented. Did you a four -year we university? implemented our bachelor's degrees just four years ago, and uh, we have bachelor's degrees in the social sciences, the natural sciences, humanities, business, and theology. We have had four graduating classes. The first one was 13, and this last year we had a, few, a little over 80 bachelor's degree graduates. Describe uh, briefly your campus at, at St. Gregory's. Size, what's there? We have a, about 70 acres right on the immediate campus, but that's also part of a, a very large block of land owned by the monastery, so it has a rural feel. It's on the uh, northwest uh, edge of, of Shawnee, which is very near the uh, Oklahoma City Metroplex. We have a variety of buildings. Uh, we have residential halls on our campus, a couple academic centers, theater, museum, a very fine athletic facility uh, that serves not only our student population but the local community as well. And the in Cavaliers. The monastic, we are the Cavaliers. St. Gregory Cavaliers. I think that's very appropriate that we have the, the Cowboys and the Cavaliers on the same program. Well, that's a dangerous combination. That's right. Well, let me ask Dr. Halligan. Uh, Dr. Halligan, I noticed on the OSU website something that uh, caught my eye and I followed up on it and was fascinated by what I found. But please tell our viewers about what the road to roads is. Well, in the recent issue of the Chronicle of Higher Education, there's a picture of an OSU graduate. They came to our campus. This is the dominant magazine of higher education. They came to our campus and spent almost a week here 
and the purpose was to find out why was Oklahoma State University being so successful in its competition, not just for Rhodes, but for Marshalls and Trumans and Goldwaters. Now, by Rhodes, we're talking about the Rhodes Scholarship. That's correct. That's yes. correct. But but uh, there's a general recognition because we are a Truman Honor Institution, one of six in the United States. Six? That's correct. Are uh, they, are University of Minnesota, University of Kansas, University of Texas, Oklahoma State University, and Willamette University are, are particular institutions that have been recognized but for the development of, of students. But they came here simply to interview our people and to find out why we are doing so well in terms of developing our students for competition for prestigious scholarships and prestigious jobs once they graduate. What'd they find? They found out that it's this involvement of the faculty in the students' lives. We have a very, very strong undergraduate research program funded by Lou Wentz, principally, yeah. who is the richest man in Oklahoma for a while on a magazine, of, on Time Cover, the cover of Time Magazine. But more importantly, it is the culture on the campus of the faculty being intimately involved in the lives of the undergraduates on this campus as well as the graduates. And when they came here, they were very pleasantly surprised, and that's why they wanted to write a national article featuring OSU. Well, uh, I noticed uh, in a Time Magazine article uh, just a week or so ago the, the rate of uh, graduation rate for public universities is in the... Uh, a 40% right. rate after five years. Right. How does Oklahoma State s stack up there? Well, everyone measures things when they arrived, and so when I arrived right. it was 48%, and we are now at 55%, and we are on our way to 65%. Over 80% of our freshmen have successfully made the transit to being a sophomore for the last two years, and so we're confident we can graduate 65% of our students. And that's another thing that led to our being named America's Best College By, is that when they looked at all these institutions, they said something special is happening in Stoller. I'd like to ask both of you about technology, but right now we need to take a break. We'll be right back. You're watching The Verdict with Mick Cornett and Kent Myers and our special guest. not just girls. But hey, campfire's definitely for kids. So call the campfire office nearest you to join in on the fun. Because let's face it, you're not getting any younger. St. Gregory's University has been changing the lives of people like me for 125 years. Affordable, private Catholic education, balanced with dedication to community and service, makes St. Gregory special. We're extremely proud of our students' outstanding academic achievements and our nationally ranked athletic teams. It's when you help a student build a future of balance, integrity, and service that you change a life forever. St. Gregory's, a community for life. Yesterday was quite awful. You can say that again. On Broadway is Oklahoma's premier youth musical theater company. Bringing our daughter here was one of the smartest things we've ever done. I've learned a lot. I've gained a lot of confidence. They helped me develop talents I never knew I had. And it's fun. On Broadway, Oklahoma's premier youth musical theater company. Now enrolling in Edmond. Call 330-CAST. That's 330-2278. Every day, in state governments throughout the country, crucial decisions are being made that affect the lives of children and their families. But as this process takes place, children are often left voiceless. When these children raise their hands to be heard, is anyone listening? There are people listening. They are child advocates. Join us and raise your hand for kids. We are back on The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers and Dr. Lawrence DeSisson of St. Gregory's University and Dr. James Halligan of Oklahoma State University. And uh, Kent, you found something on the website that I thought was interesting. I did. It was a score. Uh, I always pay attention to scores, and, uh, and I love this because uh, of my affiliation with, the, as it turns out, the losing team. 
but I saw a score, Dr. Halligan, that I'd like you to comment on. It was Oklahoma State University won, Harvard University nothing. What does that mean? Well, it means in the recent Rhodes competition, OSU was successful in having one of our students picked. But we also had a Marshall and a Goldwater and, and Truman's, uh, and uh, Harvard University was not successful in that endeavor. But it really is about, and that's what the Chronicle article is about, is there's a transition taking place in the United States. It used to be the vast majority of Rhodes and Marshalls and Truman's came from the Ivy League schools, and that is changing dramatically, absolutely dramatically, and that's why they came to Oklahoma to see what was happening here. But the bottom line is Oklahoma State had a Rhodes Scholar and Harvard did not. That's correct. Okay, because you were kind of beating around the bush there, being, <laughs> being politically correct, but I want that, want that duly noted because you should be very proud well, of Well, we don't want to rub it in, but we're, we're really happy. I want to talk to you about technology. Sure. I'd like to get the larger school perspective from you and then uh, Father Lawrence might get a smaller school sure. perspective right. from you. How do you foresee technology uh, involvement in education, higher education? Well. There's no question that many, many of our students are going to take a, a continuing education, and for the vast majority of them, will use the internet in order to access that. But for our students, a lot of them still come when they're 18 years old, and uh, they want the classic residential experience. I say their parents are ready for them to leave home, <laughs> <laughs> and they are ready to leave home. And so I think uh, we want to make certain that that they develop their social skills and their cultural skills in addition to their academic skills. That's very so important. So it's not a substitute. That's what you're trying not to say. Not a substitute yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. Father Lawrence, how, how can technology aid a, a smaller university? It was critical, I think, in our transition into a four-year university, at not having the resources to be able to build several different departments on our campus. We saw technology as both a, a, an opportunity for us to expand our offerings to our students and also as an opportunity to prepare our students for the 21st century. Uh, we were the first uh, university in Oklahoma to declare ourselves a laptop university. That was uh, four years ago now, requiring all of our incoming students to uh, uh, purchase a, a laptop computer to tie into the local area network that we established on our campus be that ties together all the classrooms, the faculty offices, the residence halls. And this uh, enables us to build this formation and technology, communications technology, information technology into every aspect of our campus life so that the students are very well prepared to use that later on. It's also an opportunity for us to tie in our adult accelerated degree completion programs that are off our, our main campus. Uh, I taught in that program and was able to use the technology as a link to the main campus between our, our weekly sessions. But as Dr. Halligan said, it's, it's certainly not uh, a substitute is a very important tool that we can use in our educational efforts. It's a necessary aspect of our education to prepare our students for the 21st century workplace, but it is certainly not a, a, a substitute for the individual attention that the professor, the instructor, the mentor can give to those uh, students inside and outside the classroom. Dr. Halligan, I'm going to ask uh, you this question and then ask Father Lawrence the same question so you can be, be thinking about it. Uh, <laughs> What's the biggest problem that Oklahoma State University faces today that, that worries you the most? Well, we're in the Big 12 Conference. <laughs> so that says that we are competing academically. To me, our participation in the Big, Big 12 Conference is more important academically than athletically. Mm. I am sincere about that. So how do you compete? academically in a Big 12 environment. Well, so that says that we are constantly comparing ourselves, all of our metrics in terms of we just added our two, million, two millionth volume to our library. Uh, we are constantly comparing our salaries with the University of Texas and Texas A&M, University of Colorado, University of Missouri. And so it is a real challenge for us. And I think challenges are good for you, to be honest with you. I think they stimulate you, stimulate, make you be innovative. But for us, to, to be an active part of that group of universities, which are among the very best in the nation, is a true opportunity for us. We have lots of faculty exchanges. All the administrators meet. The librarians meet on a regular basis. The deans of engineering, all of them meet on a regular basis and exchange ideas, exchange faculty, beginning to do some joint research projects. And so to me, ensuring that we can attract and retain the kind of faculty such that we can be fully competitive academically in the Big 12 is the greatest challenge that I have. Does that trace back to, fun to money, to funding? 
Well, almost everything in life traces yeah. back to money, but it also traces back to culture. I think we need to have very high standards on our campus, high expectations for ourselves and for our faculty and for our students. We have found that as we raise the expectations for our students, they've done remarkably well in national competitions. And so, and this is just not in the roads, but and across the board at OSU, our students when they go out and compete do very well because we challenge them. What's the biggest problem in about a minute? What's okay. the biggest problem at St. Gregory's? I think that all of our, our challenges are re related to the challenge of managing our growth, that as the institution has changed so very rapidly and grown so very rapidly, we're trying to raise all aspects of the university at the same time, not just our physical plant facilities in order to keep up the growing population, but also our, our quality of our faculty to continue to recruit high quality faculty to our campus and also uh, to raise the financial support for the institution that we need. Uh, our greatest expense continues to be scholarship aid for our students. You know, uh, it's a myth that private schools are only for the elite. Uh, our average family income for our freshman family is less than $55,000 a year. And so in order for those students to be able to choose, 75% of our students come from Oklahoma. And to be able to make that opportunity available for them um, is, is a great challenge for us. We've got just a couple of minutes left in this segment. Why don't we give each of you an opportunity to kind of sum up some, some ideas or topics that maybe we haven't been able to discuss. Yeah, what's your vision? What's your vision for Oklahoma State? What's your vision for St. Gregory's? The important thing we're trying to do is to enter into a partnership with the people of Oklahoma to educate their sons and daughters and give them a total education, not just an academic education, but a, a life experience education. And then to create a climate whereby they can get a job in Oklahoma, make a contribution to the Oklahoma economy, spend their lives with us here in Oklahoma. That is really what OSU is about. With our co-op extension, we contact about 1.4 million people a year just through that organization. So for us to be a full partner with the people of Oklahoma, to make this an even better place to live. I think it's great to live in Oklahoma. <laughs> I love Oklahoma, I really do. But to me, making Oklahoma even better, such that our children and grandchildren can be here with us, is what this university is all about. Dr. Sisson? Well, St. Gregory's, as we continue to develop, we will look to, to become increasingly uh, an institution that all of Oklahoma can take great pride in. We have a wonderful diversity of higher education institutions in the state of Oklahoma. And we want St. Gregory's as Oklahoma's only Catholic institution of higher learning to, to be a source of pride for our entire state. And in order to accomplish that and to continue raising our standards, we need to ensure that we have the resources in order to accomplish that. So we're going to have a growth strategy from here on out and uh, be a great source of pride for our state and our region. And I might just say I'm a great supporter of a vibrant private sector in higher education in Oklahoma. So I, we wish you the very best at St. Gregory's. We embrace you. Thank you. Dr. James Halligan, Oklahoma State, Dr. Lawrence DeSisson of St. Gregory's, and Kent and I'll be right back after this. Hello, my name is Ted Smith. I'm president of the board of directors of the Oklahoma Disability Law Center. ODLC provides free legal services in civil matters to people with physical and mental disabilities. I'm Mike Sykes, Vice President of ODLC. For more information, call 1-800-880-7755. The Oklahoma Disability Law Center provides high quality legal services to people with physical and mental disabilities. In Oklahoma, there are more than 1,600 children waiting to be adopted. They're of all ages, and for many, home has been a source of pain and conflict. They've dreamed of finding a better life and a loving family. Consider adoption. For more information, call 1-877-OK-SWIFT or visit the website www.okdhs.org. Adopt. It may be the toughest job you'll ever love. Scouts of America, where above all else, character counts. Bringing out the best in each student. 
That is the simple goal and tradition of Heritage Hall. The focus on the individual shapes the educational experience at Heritage Hall. Each student benefits from small classes, able, dedicated teachers, a solid academic curriculum, and exceptional co-curricular programs of athletics, arts, community service, and other activities. Parental involvement, personalized counseling, and the development of responsibility, integrity, and love of learning. If you want education taught with pride, then you want Heritage Hall. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're back on The Verdict, wrapping up a show that we discussed higher education. Well, we did. We talked about St. Gregory's University and Oklahoma State University. Uh, we did a show uh, a previous week with Oklahoma State University being focused, and I wore an Oklahoma State University tie. Today, I have a St. Gregory's tie on. It's, it's hard to tell, but that's what that is. You're a cavalier for a day. I, I am, and proud to be that. Uh, I want to once again thank Oklahoma State University for allowing us to be on the campus. Particular thanks to the OSU Educational TV Services organization, Natalie Watkins and Charlotte Razouk. We do appreciate all you've done to make this such a nice uh, experience for us, and we hope a good show for our viewers. Um, Oklahomans really, Mick, are unique, I think in having opportunities for higher education that run the gamut from the very largest and yet top quality to the very smallest and yet mm -hmm. top quality. They don't have to make a choice between good and bad. Oklahomans are fortunate to be able to choose their higher education opportunities between good and good and we saw two fine uh, examples of that today here in the, in the uh, person of their particular presidents. Um, Great institutions without excellent leadership lose their greatness. And it is quite clear from the performance of these two gentlemen that, th that the two institutions we talked about today, Oklahoma State University and St. Gregory's University, are indeed uh, fortunate to have excellent leadership. Uh, there's just, that's not going to be a problem for these two fine institutions. I think there's a mindset, Kent, by a lot of people that higher education is for kids 18 to 22, when really it's a lifetime experience, and these universities are examples of how people can learn throughout their entire life. Absolutely. All right. And do it well. Well, join us on our website, theverdict.tv, and if you have an idea for a show, email us and uh, we'll check it out. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time on The Verdict. This program was brought to you by Crow and Dunleavy, a professional corporation. And also brought to you by a friend of Oklahoma Lawyers for Children and Delta Dental Plan of Oklahoma. <laughs>